Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Theatre Com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with the PlayStation 5. The PS5 is scheduled to launch in the year 2020, but we do know that there are development kits in the hands of a select number of developers. Understand that this is a very small number of developers who have very close ties to Sony. But, according to a Twitter user by the name of Ray Sekiro, well, we actually have images of this PlayStation 5 development kit. However, before everyone starts getting too excited, this image is almost certainly fake. In fact, the controller alone has already been debunked by Jason Schreier, who of course works over at Kutaku on the Reset Era forums. Also, if you look at the images that we're seeing of the PlayStation 5, both the controller as well as the system, it just doesn't look right and is almost certainly a computer render. And if you compare that to PlayStation 4 uh, development kits and other development kits we've seen before, both of Xbox as PlayStation, Nintendo, well, you can see the difference in how the hardware looks. Obviously, development kits do look extremely different to the sleek and beautiful designs. Well, okay, not always beautiful, but sleeker designs of the retail systems. But once again, you can see that this does not quite look right. Nevertheless, I wanted to cover this because a number of people have already reported that this is indeed factual and the rumors are starting to circulate on the internet. Speaking of fakes, I also want to cover an April Fools that the website WCCF Tech have created regarding Intel's XE graphics cards. The reason I want to cover this is because a number of tech websites have actually reported this as, well, factual. And if you think that they may actually be in on the act and they're just putting out their own spin on April Fools, no, some of these reports have actually emerged today, which is April 2nd. Now, I'm not going to read over all of the specifications of this April Fools because, well, it's April Fools, but there are a couple of telltale signs. For one, the GPU is clocked at 2700 megahertz, which is pretty ambitious. We also have DirectX 14, which, okay, with the supposed release date of mid next year, you can argue that Microsoft are just going to be doing a complete revamp of DirectX. They want to skip DX13 because, you know, 13 being unlucky. So it's not totally out of the possibility that they will just skip to 14. But it doesn't make much sense, to be honest with you. But the thing that made me just want to smash my head against the wall that other tech websites have been reporting that this is true... <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's, well, it's going to be using 4D X point. No, not 3D X point, 4D X point. So now that Intel have created 4D X point, I mean, I've heard of time slicing for GPUs and CPUs, but now they have the mastery of time itself. I can only assume that Dr. Emmett Brown helped create this GPU. Um, and well, I imagine there's going to be a flux capacitor or two within the GPU design, but that's probably NDA, so I don't know if I can talk about that yet. But seriously, um, yeah, <laughs> I just wanted to touch on this just to let you guys know. I'm pretty sure most of you know this is an April Fool's anyway, but I just needed to talk about this because of the absurdity of it. While I'm on the subject of Intel, though, there is the 8280M. A uh, processor which has been spotted on Sis of Sandra, and I would just like to thank Kamichi on Twitter for providing this leak. There are a couple of things that we can see from this CPU. The first is that the RAM speed for this processor is appearing to be 3200 megahertz. It also has a small clock speed increase from the 8180s and a couple other bits and pieces that you can probably see yourselves. I'm not going to go super in-depth into this leak simply because I'm expecting several announcements from Intel later on because they're putting on the live stream which is going to focus on the data center. So most likely I'm going to cover a lot of this stuff and all of their announcements tomorrow. But I just wanted to make you aware of this entry. Yesterday I also put out a video concerning additional information for Navi, Matisse, as well as Fred Ripper, 
and the next generation Epic processors known as Rome. However, there were several things I had to hold back with Rome, but since then, Jim at Adored TV actually put out a video and has released some information that my source actually asked me to hold back. So my source has gone in contact with me again and has said that I can share the same information that Jim at Adored TV had released, although there is still some information that my source is not comfortable with me sharing, but it's more on the GPU side of things, but I can't say any more. Uh, in regards to Epic, one of the things that I can say is that AMD have received a lot of design wins. Apparently, I'm hearing over 120 design wins, which is an astronomical number. And my source has also confirmed that the next generation Rome processors will sport a lot more PCIe lanes as well. So for additional IO, that's going to certainly be a very good thing. Next up, we have a fairly lengthy press statement from AMD slash Computex. And it would appear that yes, Lisa Su will be taking to the stage to make several key announcements. I'm not gonna read out all of the press statement, but I will put it on screen as well as link it, of course, in the video description. A couple of the key excerpts is Taiwan External Trade Development Council announced today that the 2019 Computex International Press Conference will hold a keynote will hold a keynote by AMD President and CEO Dr. Lisa Su. The 2019 Computex International Press Conference and CEO keynote. Geez, that just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? It's scheduled for Monday, May 27th at 10 a.m. in room 201 of the Taipei International Convention Center in Taipei, Taiwan, with the keynote topic the next generation of high performance computing. And we also have uh, a small press statement where Lisa Su said, and I quote, as one of the most important global events in our industry, I look forward to Computex each year. I am honored to deliver the opening keynote this year and provide new details on next generation high performance AMD platforms and products. With our partners, we will take to the story of how leading uh, edge technologies and an open ecosystem are driving an inflection point in computing and industry innovation and posi positively impacting several important markets. I mentioned that during the CEO keynote, Dr. Lisa Su and other high profile guests will highlight new details of upcoming products and showcase how the industry is building a high performance computing ecosystem that will push technologies to the next level. End quote. Personally, I think at the very least, we're going to get a whole slew of information concerning Zen 2, probably updated information regarding Nave, and with any luck at all, uh, possibly a list of SKUs for Ryzen uh, 3000 series. Either way, I think pretty much all of the world will be watching this conference. It's going to be... <laughs> It's going to be extremely interesting, and I'm putting that very, very mildly. I'd also like to discuss an early engineering sample CPU that has been discovered on Sysoft's Sandra uh, database, and it is running on an X570 creation motherboard from MSI. Now, I was going to discuss this yesterday, but I wanted to find out more information regarding the actual CPU itself. So I actually reached out to a couple of sources and one of the sources at AMD themselves actually responded back, giving me a couple of bits of information regarding this processor. I'm still trying to find out more information, but a number of you asked what my opinions was of this, and that's why I'm kind of giving you this small update. So let's look over the CPU itself. So first things first, the engineering sample has a very simple, easy to remember name. So it just rolls off the tongue as most of these seem to do. It is 2DS104BBM4GH2 underscore 38 slash 34 underscore N. And it is almost certainly an AMD Matisse engineering sample CPU. I've had that confirmed to me, and I don't believe the source would lie. But 38 slash 34, well, as you probably know, those are turbo and base clock frequencies respectively. There are a couple of things though, that you might look at with this particular entry and say to yourself, well, golly gosh, these results look a bit weird, dude. I mean, what's with the clock speed of the memory with the IMC running at just 733 megahertz? 
Also, you can see that the level three cache looks a bit hinky at two times eight megabytes. Although to be fair, we do have 512 kilobytes for level two. And most of the other stuff does look within the realms of what you would expect here. So what's going on? Well, the answer is very simple. I was told by my source that this is very, very early engineering sample silicon, and it is simply to test TDP and other things. It is not uh, to be testing performance. It's basically just to test whether things explode or not. Uh, furthermore, in regards to the uh, higher-end X570 board, I was also whispered that there's, well, going to be two variants of the X570 chipset. One is going to be more of a premium design and one is going to be a cheaper design. Now I'm trying to find out exactly what that is and what that means. Um, so I've reached out to a couple of industry sources to see if I can find out any information. Unfortunately, a lot of this stuff is rather closely guarded, so I can't promise I'll be able to uh, fill you guys in on that anytime soon. But still, I did find it rather interesting because a different source that I'd spoken to, if you recall, uh, actually just yesterday, said that one of the things AMD are apparently struggling with on the higher core count processors is segmenting the market and trying to figure out how they're going to appeal to different markets with higher core counts. Just to clarify here, I don't mean like, you know, eight core CPUs, I mean 12 and above. And that's one of the reasons that, supposedly anyway, although a couple of sources have told me this, AMD are struggling to decide whether to launch the 16 core processors at the same time as everything else or whether to hold back. In other words, they're trying to figure out, well, hey, how do we target the the AM4 platform, the X570, just to make it simple here, line of motherboards, along with the high core count when we also have Threadripper, because obviously this is kind of critical. You don't want mixed messages with marketing. You want it to be as simple and concise as possible. And marketing is the thing that obviously drives the sales and that as much hype as possible, consistently as possible for your processor or whatever product is imperative to make sure that your sales continue to be as high as possible. And obviously, we don't exactly know how Intel will be countering. It's possible they might decide to eat into their profits or possibly even sell it at a slight loss and cut the prices of the 9900K or so on. We've also seen that different stepping of silicon as well. So it's possible that maybe that's gonna have higher clock speed. After all, the KF processors According to a chap over at Tom's Hardware, they did overclock a little bit higher. So I will be interested to see exactly what Comet Lake does achieve. Uh, but don't forget that isn't launching until I've heard between the first quarter and the second quarter of next year. So to me anyway, it's going to be fascinating to see how all of this just falls into place. So yeah, uh, watch this space. Also have a very, very small update concerning Comet Lake as well, while we're on the subject of Comet Lake. And that is that the CPU seems to have even additional support for Linux. We've seen it on Linux 5.2. And now Mesa itself is going to be supporting the Comet Lake iGPU, and that's coming in 9.1. Don't forget that Comet Lake is still using the same iGPU of Gen 9, so it doesn't really take that much to uh, put that support into the processor. I'm sorry, to put that support into the uh, OS, but still it's nice that it's happening and it's gonna be curious to see exactly how all of this once again plays out. With all of that said, hopefully, well, you've enjoyed the video. If you did, you can like this video and subscribe to the channel as well as click the bell icon because subscribing is not enough on YouTube anymore, apparently. Uh, you can also find us on Patreon down below, as well as Amazon affiliate links. So if you need to buy a new toothbrush, if you do so using the Amazon affiliate links, it gives us a few pennies and doesn't cost you anything else. Oh, and if you have a tip for me, myself, and I, so there's three of us you're going to be tipping right there, you can do so by emailing paul at redgamingtech.com. That is paul at redgamingtech.com. And obviously your anonymity will be guaranteed. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.